Alright, allow me to be a generic YouTuber for a bit. I know these videos aren't anything new, and no one on the internet really cares about your opinion, but damn do I love the Far Cry franchise. I've been playing it for over a decade and enjoy every single game, so I just want to talk about it for a little bit. Let's rank the Far Cry games from the worst to the best. Starting from the worst, Far Cry 1. Now, Far Cry 1 is somewhat controversial because it was made by a different studio. Far Cry 1 was made by Crytek, not Ubisoft, hence the name Far Cry. And it definitely feels very different from the later games. That might make you like Far Cry 1 and dislike the rest of the franchise, but it's the opposite for me. I liked the rest of the franchise and genuinely did not like Far Cry 1. The thing that really killed the game for me is that the AI is aimbot bullshit. They can see you through any vegetation and snipe you from across the map. The game gives you all these great assault weapons, but you're forced to play stealthy in a game that doesn't really have proper stealth, and it just feels wrong to me. I really didn't have fun with this game. There's a big gap between Far Cry 1 and the rest of the franchise, because I genuinely enjoy the rest of the games, but I didn't like Far Cry 1. So the next one I'm going to put on this list is Far Cry 3. Well, well wait a minute, Far Cry 3? This is everyone's favorite in the franchise, why is it so low? Alright, so again, to clarify, I enjoy all of the Far Cry games moving forward. So I'm not saying Far Cry 3 is bad because it's on this end of the spectrum, just that I like the other ones more, and I have to explain why. Far Cry 3 was a lot of people's introduction to the franchise, so they have a soft spot for it. And it was also pretty innovative for what Far Cry is going to do. It laid the groundwork for the later games. That might make people burnt out on the later games, but I still enjoyed Far Cry, so I always wanted more. I'll be talking about why people really liked Far Cry 3 as I move on, but let's just talk about some of the good things Far Cry 3 did. It was in a genuine open world on a really gorgeous looking tropical island. I mean, really, this game was eye candy. You can just walk and explore and look at all of it for a while when it came out. And it still looks good, and you can still do that. This also blended directly into the open world gameplay, where you can approach any situation in any way you want. And that was fun. It, it just lended itself to endless replayability. But not everything is perfect about Far Cry 3. The biggest problem with Far Cry 3 is by far the story. The story revolves around Stokoff stereotype protagonist douchebags that you can't relate to or enjoy or care about in the least. Ubisoft toted the story as going from being a regular, just dude that grew up in America that never shot anyone, never really even used a gun, to someone that has to now murder a bunch of people. But in all reality, the character development in-game went from one mission being this terrified pussy to the next mission just murdering people and enjoying it. It wasn't written particularly well, and it was portrayed even worse within the game. It's one thing to simply have a bad story and good gameplay, but it's another thing to have your story constantly conflict with the gameplay. The story missions pulled you away from open world gameplay and forced you into linear missions and also forced you to play a specific way. Whether it was escorting an NPC that had a penchant for killing himself, or protecting an NPC that was repairing and if he died well you had to restart the whole section over again, or even worse, the instant failure stealth missions where you have to stealth through a certain section and if they see you restart from the very beginning, fuck everything about these. This majorly hurts the gameplay, and the only reason they exist is because it has to make sense within the story. You're having to stealth onto a boat, and if you just shot everyone, well, the person that was there on the boat would know you were coming, and it wouldn't make sense. This should never happen, because it conflicts with the gameplay and majorly hurts it. Bottom line, your story should not make the gameplay worse. If you're wondering why I haven't mentioned Voss yet, it's because I'm going to talk about him with the next game, Far Cry 4. Yes, I'm putting Far Cry 4 above Far Cry 3, but hear me out. These two games aren't really very different. The biggest difference between them is that one is based in the Himalayas and one is based in a tropical island. Personally myself, I'll take the Himalayas just because we've seen the tropical environment so many times before, but that's all up to personal opinion. The games themselves basically run on the same blueprint with the same gameplay. Really the biggest difference between Far Cry 3 and Far Cry 4 is that Far Cry 4 has a ton of quality of life improvements. Far Cry 4 graphically looks amazing and much better than Far Cry 3. Which, if you haven't played Far Cry 3 and 4 recently, you might not notice, but once you play them side by side, you really notice a big difference. Far Cry 4 adds a ton of small things that really help the player, like say the grappling hook. Want to go over that hill right in front of you? Well, just climb over it with a grappling hook. In Far Cry 3, you would have had to walk all the way around it. And the biggest thing above all else when it comes to Far Cry 4 and Far Cry 3 is that Far Cry 4 has a bunch of more guns. This is honestly the reason why I like Far Cry 4 more than Far Cry 3. You see, Far Cry 4 added all of the guns that we had in Far Cry 3, literally ported them over, so if you wanted to play with the Far Cry 3 guns, you could do that in Far Cry 4, but it also doubled the roster. It had just as many guns in Far Cry 4 that Far Cry 3 did, except for now it also has Far Cry 3's guns. So it makes it really hard for me to go back and play Far Cry 3 because I can still toy around with those guns in Far Cry 4 with a bunch of small improvements that genuinely help the game. 
Guns are fun and a shooter. Who would have thought? The conclusion of come to as to why people like Far Cry 3 over Far Cry 4 is because of one character, Voss. How many times have people told you that Far Cry 3 should have ended after you killed Voss? Even though you had an entire island you hadn't been to yet with a bunch of new guns you haven't used yet. People didn't really care about the gameplay, they just cared about the next crazy thing Voss was going to do. And that's not really me. As interesting and amusing as Voss was, I'm here in Far Cry for the open world gameplay to figure out what loadouts really can work best, to see the next crazy thing I can do to take over that outpost, that's why I play Far Cry. And Far Cry 4 gives me more options to do this. As far as I'm concerned, Far Cry 3 and 4 have both terrible stories, and Voss is the only thing holding up Far Cry 3 in the story department, which really doesn't make me care very much. These two are almost the same game, but the quality of life improvements and just having more guns in Far Cry 4 makes me put it over Far Cry 3. Next on the list is Far Cry 5. Far Cry 5 addressed the problems people were having with Far Cry 3 and 4 starting to feel repetitive. Gone are the towers you need to climb to open up the map. Instead, everything is just sort of out of exploration. You're never forced to do a specific thing. The story isn't a linear, straightforward path. You can go in any direction you want to. It is genuinely open world. I know there was a joke when Far Cry 3 came out that Far Cry 3 was basically Skyrim with guns, but if you were going to make that joke about any of the Far Cry games, it would be Far Cry 5. You can just do anything you want to, and it makes exploring the world that much more enjoyable and genuine. On top of all of this, the Dunia engine had finally been overhauled. Far Cry 5 looks and feels way different than the previous games just from a technological standpoint. The game is gorgeous, and you can make an argument for it being the best looking game of all time so far. And I know there's a lot of other games you can throw in there like Crisis 3, but the game just looks really believable. But it's not flawless, of course. The story is a common problem in Far Cry games, and Far Cry 5 is no exception. It started good, the characters seemed like they were going somewhere, the story seemed like it was going somewhere, living in oppressive Montana with some cult controlling everything, you gotta take the cult down, and I'm simplifying it, but it played out really well right up until the end. I'm not gonna say anything more than this, but the ending fucking sucks in Far Cry 5. It makes it feel like everything you did does not matter. There are other problems I have with the game as well. The gun roster is really limited, and most of the guns are just variations of other guns we've already used before. With that said, I see why this is the case now, as they keep adding guns post-launch, and it makes me say, just why were these not in here when the game came out? If you wanted to do this, you need to have a full roster of guns and then add more later, which I would have been awesome with, but instead it feels like they took some out and just added them later on. But the guns that were there felt really, really fun to use, and the whole game just feels different while still feeling like Far Cry. It's set in a gorgeous area of Montana, and the idea of a cult controlling an American rural town is just something that's really appealing and I feel like is more relatable than the other Far Cry games. I do wish they didn't play it so safe and they really went into current events, but regardless, it's still really fun and it's just a great Far Cry game. Next up, Far Cry 2. This is probably the most controversial pick on this list, putting it so high, because people either really love or hate Far Cry 2, and I'm way more on the love side. Far Cry 2 is kind of the black sheep. It stands out more than anything else in the Far Cry franchise. It just feels so... so raw. This game was gritty and did not hold your hand. There were no towers to open up a map. There was no in-game menus like a map to begin with. You held the map in your hand. And that's probably my favorite part of Far Cry 2. Not that you're holding the map in your hand, but just that this shows the game is not going to break your immersion. HUD is minimal. There's no in-game menus telling you what skills you can upgrade and level up. Video game trope things just kind of don't really exist, and if they do exist, they're hidden within the world. For example, if you want to upgrade the reliability of your gun, you need to go to a weapon vendor, use this old computer that seems fitting to this third world African country, and upgrade it there. The game never pulls you out of the environment, and it always keeps immersion. It's really easy to play it for hours on end when you're just never pulled out of this African environment. It's dark, it's gritty, and it really doesn't hold your hand, and I love that about it. But the fact that it doesn't hold your hand can cause a lot of problems because people were confused on how it works, and I feel like this is where most of the complaints came from. For example, there's a mechanic in this game that has your gun jam. If you pick up a gun and you use it, the more you use it over time, the rustier the gun gets, and the higher the chances of that gun rusting. But the game really only tells you that if you use a gun more, it will jam. And it doesn't really show how to avoid it, so a lot of people just had their guns jamming as they were shooting at enemies and then they died, and that's frustrating. But what they didn't realize is that if you went to a weapon vendor and bought a new gun, there was sort of a safe house next to it where you could pick up a brand new gun anytime you went there and you didn't have to buy it again, 
And if you did this anytime you went by one, you really didn't have to worry about your guns jamming. If you knew this, then the gun jamming mechanic was actually a really cool thing. And I wish it would come back in the later Far Cry games, but I doubt it ever will. The one complaint I can see that's very valid when Far Cry 2 is concerned is malaria. It just doesn't seem to serve any purpose. You come down with malaria when you start the game, and you're gonna have to manage the fact that you need to go get malaria pills just to taper off this malaria that you can't fix. Uh, okay, I, I have genuinely no idea why it's there, you just have malaria. It's not as big of a deal as I made it sound, because you can actually ignore it for most of the game and not worry about it. I think the last time I played Far Cry 2 I only got new pills twice, and for the rest of the game that was perfectly fine but it still stands as a weird mechanic that doesn't serve a purpose. Maybe it was supposed to make you feel more oppressed in this crappy, shitty third world African country? I don't know, I'm stretching. But the point is, the game doesn't hold your hand, and this can be very polarizing. For example, you're there to kill the arms dealer, but most of the game you're not doing this. Most of the game you're just taking missions from random dudes from cell towers, from arms dealers, to warring African factions and you're not really sure why you're there, and the first time you play it you'll have no idea what you're doing. About halfway through the game, you think you're about to beat the game, and then the game throws an entirely new map at you, and I know a lot of people that saw this and just went, fuck it, I'm done. Until you kind of get your groove and understand how Far Cry 2 works and get a feel for it, it can feel like busy work, but once you sort of understand how the game works, it's just a lot of fun figuring out how you're going to tackle this mission that you've accepted. Somehow I haven't talked about the environment yet. I've mentioned this game is in a third world African country, but this game came out 10 years ago. 10 years ago and it still looks this good. The game is beautiful, and of course it could do with some updating. The texture work is not the best by today's standards, but still, you can look at it today and it just pulls you into this environment. Everything feels seamless. You can go from the desert of Africa to the rainforest to the safari and everything feels smooth. It's not jarring at all. Out of all the Far Cry games, this one definitely has my favorite environment. I feel like if you play a lot of shooters, Far Cry 2 is going to be your favorite in the franchise. It sort of forces you to change things up and doesn't hold your hand. If you like games, this is really a good thing. But if you're part of the mainstream, kind of casual market, then you're likely not going to like Far Cry 2. You're probably going to complain about a lot of the mechanics in the game and just find them to be annoying, tedious work. And that's fine. That was not meant to be slander to anyone that didn't like Far Cry 2 or no matter what side you sat on, but personally myself, I'm definitely more the former. I love Far Cry 2 and I wouldn't want anything about it to be changed, aside from maybe those pesky malaria pills. And that leads us to the last Far Cry game, number one on this list, Far Cry Primal. They really went all out with this game, decided to do a bunch of research, I can't, I can't continue this. Number one is Blood Dragon. I'm not even going to put Primal on this list, I haven't played it yet. A Far Cry game without guns just kind of isn't Far Cry to me. I'll eventually play it and maybe make a video about it talking about is it really as bad as people say it is, but I haven't played it, so I'm just omitting it entirely. Number one by far is Blood Dragon for me. Where do I even begin with a game like Blood Dragon? This game is so absurd over the top. It was an expansion for Far Cry 3, and at only $15, you have no reason not to own this game. It's standalone too, so you don't even need to own the base game. It's completely not connected to Far Cry 3. If you haven't played it, what, go play it, like right now. This game exists to be a parody of over-the-top 80s action movies, and it does it so well. Everything about it is flawless. The story is cliche, stupid, but it's aware of itself. It knows how stupid it is, and that was the whole point. The environment fills the whole 80s retro neon lights everywhere, it's just awesome. Even the enemies do this with the blood dragons in game, which, I, I mean, I couldn't resist. I even got fan art of this game. If I'm supposed to be a blood dragon, and had been one for a decade before the game came out, how do I resist getting this? I can't. I just couldn't. I love this game. The aesthetics are just awesome. And the gameplay just takes what Far Cry 3 did and streamlined it, so you don't have to worry about skill trees or anything. You just play the game, you enjoy the silliness of it, and you that's all you gotta do. There's nothing more to it. It's just that awesome. And what other game can you watch a giant glowing neon lizard flip a car, make it explode, and then turn around and fire lasers out of its fucking eyes to destroy a helicopter? It's absurd, it's over the top, and I think this is where Far Cry can be at its best. It's actually quite amusing, because my number one and two spots are on so far opposite ends of the spectrum, and really this is what Far Cry needs to notice. You make it full-on immersion sort of kind of pseudo-realism, or you go all out with how silly it is. I feel like Far Cry 3 and 4 tried to do this in the middle blend, and I don't know, it doesn't work anywhere as near as well for me. The only complaint 
And this is the only thing I can come up with when it comes to Blood Dragon. It's just that it's too easy. If you play Blood Dragon, play it on the hardest setting, and that will still be too easy for you. The game is supposed to be over the top, and you end up getting a lot of upgrades, and very early on you just get a ton of health, your guns get upgraded like crazy, and none of the enemies really pose much of a threat. Vehicles are also completely useless because you run at a million miles an hour, which isn't really too much of a problem, I never really cared much for vehicles anyway. Regardless, that's my list from the worst to best Farker games. Thanks to my patrons, you can see them popping up on screen. Thanks to everyone that gives donations and bits over on Twitch. So if you want to follow me on Twitch, you can follow me. There's a link down below in the video information. I do stream Far Cry every once in a while, and I will be streaming the new expansion that comes out tonight or tomorrow, depending if it's a midnight release. So be looking forward to that. Thanks for watching. Love you guys. And I'll see you next video.